Oh, God, you get mad at... Why are you mad at God? You're, we are the ones that are forsaking Him. And yet we get mad at God. That's, man, if I, it's a good thing I'm not God. Everybody would be dead. <laughs> Including me. <laughs> Especially her. The one in my flesh. Oh, man. Isn't it true? How can you hear the still quietness of God if you're so busy? You can't, people. God can't speak to you. Then I'll get you. My dad used to say, if your mouth is open, your ears are closed. Oh, that's good. There you go. Mike? No, I was just, <clears throat> just thinking, uh, it's better to be like Kathy was saying, I'd rather be on God's good side than, um, not that he's a punishing God or whatever, but he will, he will send a trial your way to get your attention if you're not paying attention. That's it. Like you said, and then people get mad at him, why are you, you know, allowing this to happen to me, God? And I think, get your attention. and it doesn't it all boil down to um, I know when I got saved, when, when the Holy Spirit opened my heart and I saw my need of Christ, when I accepted Christ as my Savior, I meant every bit of it. Lord, you will be Lord, Master of my life from that point on. And I think sometimes I, uh, I don't want to be legalistic here, okay? But sometimes I wonder if people really got saved when they say they got saved. Because Jesus ought to be Lord of your life. You said to God, you were turning, giving up the old way, and going forward for Him. You said to God, I'm not going back that way anymore. Mike, you made God that promise. Mike and I have that promise. And all of a sudden, you don't see them in church anymore. You don't see them at gatherings. You I know. You see them once in a while. Yeah, you wonder. Um, well, the, the test of the pudding is one trial and tribulation. That's right. That's right. How do you respond? See, the test of a true believer is when a trial and tribulation comes, that should draw you to God, mm -hmm. to church, to Christian fellowship, not away from it. To the book, yeah. Something's wrong if it draws you away. Something's wrong. Amen. So, something's wrong. So, if you're walking in truth, you should have a new life. You should be walking in faith. There should be some spirituality to you. There should be some Christian consistency. You should be walking cautiously. You should be growing, illuminating spiritual progress. And then 1 John 2, 6 says, He who has says he abides in him unto himself also walk just as he walked, as Christ walked. Christ, in other words, a believer should be walking in Christ-likeness. Amen? That's it. If you're walking in truth, you're going to be walking in Christ-likeness. When we get to 1 John, we get to that book. That, that's a crushing book. Let me give you an example. Uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This, uh, this is the message which we have heard from him, declaring to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. But if we walk in the uh, but if we say that we have fellowship with him, in other words, if you say you're saved and you walk in what? Darkness, you're lying and you're not practicing the truth. Don't tell me you're born again if you consistently walk in darkness. You are a liar. That's John's, God's word. That's God's word. That's we get to 1 John. John doesn't play no punches. He doesn't pull. Yeah, I know. I always do that. But he doesn't pull no punches. He doesn't. That's like, that's like a few years back. I was watching the TV and this woman was saying, I praise the Lord. I'm a Christian prostitute. Huh? <laughs> you got to be kidding me. A Christian prostitute? God bless America, but the porn shop. Yeah. Or now, hang on to your ass, people. I read an article last week. Now there are churches saying they're, homos they're born again homosexuals. No such thing. No such thing. All right? 
These people are walking in darkness. Okay? I, I, you know, there's, you got to walk in Christ. And it's not just that. I mean, the, what am I saying? I say all this. I'm not picking on homosexuals or picking on prostitutes. What I'm trying to point out here is that the church is getting more worldlier, worldlier, and worldlier, and we're not practicing Christ likeness. We need to be separate. Come out from among ye. Be separate, saith Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And the churches are going back in the worldliness. And they wonder why there's no power in the church today. There's too much politically correctness yep. that's crawled into the church. Yep. And I know that's hard to understand. Don't want to hear sin. Yep. Don't want to hear about sin. And that's where your spirituality comes in. People don't want to hear about separation today because they think you're mean and ugly and Oh, you're such a legalist and you're such a hardcore... No, it's, it's biblical. You study early church history, you talk, you talk about separationists. The early church believers were separationists. When they got saved, they left the world. And they didn't go back into it and they didn't allow the world to come into their fellowship. They were that strict. So be careful. All I'm saying, I know there's a balance here. I know there's a balance between separation and legalism. I, and I, as, a, as a, a pastor that has many degrees in theology, I understand this. But we, but we have to be, so, I believe the church is getting so worldly today that they're, they're letting every Christian do anything he wants when they don't get no church discipline whatsoever. And what happens, you get used to it. And I'm guilty of it. See, see, see we're, we're, we are used to sin. Sin doesn't bother us like it used to. Take, for instance, the TV, right? Oh, my God. I remember as a kid, I don't know how old it was, maybe seven, eight. I remember when the first kiss was televised. Oh, I thought the world was going to come to an end. The scariest thing on TV was the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. That first, oh man, you talk about the newspapers and the, oh, the horrific such on God. I mean, it was a simple kiss. Look what goes on today. Well, when I Love Lucy was on. Oh, yeah. When I Love Lucy started, that they couldn't have, they had to have twin beds. Yeah. They were not allowed to show on TV a man and woman in, bed. in the same bed. Yeah. And so I Love Lucy, a lot of those scenes were in the bedroom when they were, you know, talking in bed or whatever, and they had to have twin beds. Same with, um, was it Ozzie and Harriet or Donna Reed? One, uh, of them. one of them, I don't know. The same thing. They had to have twin beds or separate bedrooms. They weren't allowed to have them be in the same bed, in the same, you know, for, yeah. for TV. Yeah, sin does, sin does, see, we're used to it now. We're kind of used to it. It doesn't bother us anymore. Revelation 2.20 yeah. sums it up. What's it say? It says, Nevertheless, I have this against you. you tolerate the, that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. By teaching, uh, she misleads my service of the sexual immorality and eating food and sacrifice to idols. No, oh, that's the church today. That's the church today. So when somebody like I come along and I stand for solid doctrine, it's like, uh, whoa, what's, you know, he's too strict. Don't be with him. I'm not, I'm not strict. This is the strict, the book's strict. The book believes in separation. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying is be careful. And there's a way you can be a separatist and be loving at the same time, amen? Well, you can. First, I'll give you an example. You can come to my home. If somebody came to my home, I'll tell you exactly what to do. If somebody came to my home, and I know they're unsaved, and I know that they're, un, you know, and they're coming over. Let's say I'm having a birthday. So they come to my home, and they say, hey, happy birthday, Pastor Crossman. And they give me a bottle of booze for my birthday. Now, as a separatist, that's wrong. I'm not going to drink that stuff. So how do I handle it? Well, you no good sinner. You know what the Bible says? I could quote many passages against alcohol, and, and I could tear that person from top to bottom and make them feel very bad. 
So, you know, so, so this 